a little bit like a dinosaur. <laughs> that's, 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 my, that's my image. Yeah. That's my head. Hi, I'm, I'm Mark Allen Shepard. Uh, this is Bobby Clark. How do you do? And uh, Tanya Shepard, my wife. And uh, Bobby Clark has been in the, the film business and television for over 50 years. 50 years, a little more. Yeah, and I've been uh, doing uh, film and TV since... Uh, 1990, 92, and uh, we're sitting here in uh, Badmunder, Germany, and uh, we're going to tell a little bit about Hollywood and what it was like to be in the business. Um, and uh, Bobby has a little more to talk about than I do. You were uh, doing film and television since the 50s, yeah? Yeah, we, uh, we had talkies then. We, yeah, talkies. yeah, we had talkies. I, okay. I worked in talkies. But uh, you, you were also in some, some big films. I, I did a few big films, yes. Uh, Ten Commandments? I, for, for, yes, I had, I had, a, had a very, very short life with the Ten Commandments. I drove a chariot in the desert and uh, about three passes in front of the camera and toward the camera, and that was about it as far as, uh, as, as, far as my chariot racing and Ten Commandments. But you never you never met Yul Brenner. No, he was in he was he was in Europe, okay. filming or Charlton Heston. He was in Europe filming also. They yeah. they they all went over there and they just called me because they needed some put in stuff for their movies. Did did you meet anybody from the movie besides you met the director, or you? you uh, were well, you he was a second. He was a second, second unit. Team. He was second unit director. Second unit, okay. But actually, he wasn't the second unit director. He was like the third or fourth. It was okay. just a call. To come out here because we had chariots and we had horses out here and you were in the ex exodus scene no oh yes exodus scene yes yeah when the jews were running okay and then the chariots were coming after them right yes were you working uh with a team of chariot drivers or were you working by well, there yourself? was other well in the film there was other chariot drivers right okay and there's uh, another chariot driver that, that worked with me. Were you working there. by yourself that day? Well, I was in the chariot by myself, but okay. there was another chariot there also. Yeah, okay. okay. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Yeah. No, I, I don't, have, don't I, go there. Why? The I think that's classic. <laughs> well, that's, a cla that, that's you, a classic, but that's not my mommy. I know, but the and thing... And that's it. But the, the, thing, the thing is, uh, that, that's what you said in the movie. That's not my mommy. That's not my mommy. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. But that's, that's a great little scene. I mean, that, that gives, uh, gives, a way, uh, gives us all a hint that there's something going on with these, uh, that something is happening to these people. Thing was happening. Right. Because they come, in, they come in there and I'm supposed to pretend that she's my mommy, but she's not my mommy. Right. Yeah. For, for you, it was just a job, yeah? It's that's right. It's just a, just a job, and uh, when I did Star Trek, it was a acting and a stunt job. Hmm. How did you like playing with William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy? They're good. They're very yeah. professional. I never had a lot of dialogue. I never. The only thing I said with uh, with Kirk was, "I'll be merciful and quick." <laughs> yeah. You're a, a genuine cowboy from uh, your. The background is uh, right. you have a ranch, and yes. uh, the the films and the TV shows you worked on back in the 50s and 60s, a lot of them were... Uh, 60s and 70s. 60s and 70s <laughs> were like Gunsmoke and some of these other shows. They were all uh, had to do with the West and yes. Cowboys. Yes, and, yes, yes. Uh, My whole background is around horses and, and cattle and cowboys and... Rodeos and can you tell us something had, about that? Yeah, I got drunker than hell and slept in trailers sometimes and slept in <laughs> in hotels sometimes. Okay, <laughs> didn't make much money riding riding bucking horses. Okay, so um, now I started in uh, in in nineteen uh, fifty nine, I believe it was on Rawhide, because a friend of mine who was a cowboy and a rodeo guy come up to me and says, why okay. don't you come up and work in the motion picture business? They're okay. looking for cowboys. Everything was cowboys then. Yeah. And I said, yeah, well, I'll see what that's, I can do. So That's where the money was. Well, that's where the jobs were. And yeah. It was more okay. steady, okay. I thought. Okay. But uh, I went there and uh, talked to the people, and I went through the the whole business proposition of trying to get an extra card, right? Okay. which took a while to do, but eventually, eventually I got it. But you were on um, Rawhide 
for? I worked on, no, not for any long period of time. I just did several of the shows. Right, but you were on Gunsmoke for? I was on Gunsmoke, well, yes, again. I was on Gunsmoke for eight years, but eight not, years. not six or five days a week for right. eight years. No, I would, sel I would do, seldom like that. Yeah, I would do maybe two days in one episode, doubling an actor or maybe having a little bit of dialogue and getting shot off of the horse or okay. getting shot in the bar yeah. or getting in a fight in the bar and doing anything I could do. And then I would, I would be done with my part on that and I would go and I would do another show. Okay. And then when they had another thing to do, they would call me back. Right. And, and in a period of eight years, I did many, many gun smokes. Right. It was the same thing for me on, on Deep Space Nine. <coughs> I was yeah. on Deep Space Nine for seven years, yeah. but I wasn't working every day. Right. But that's where your that's where your checks came from. Most, right. Your, your most regular checks. My most regular checks were right. from Star Trek. Right, but I also worked Big Valley, uh, um, oh, good God, all, just about all the Westerns, uh, Virginian, Laredo, uh, just on and on. All right, yeah, uh, Mark, uh, I met you, I know, just, just this yesterday. Yesterday, yesterday. <laughs> and I know you Yeah, we have a long history yeah, together. <laughs> yes, we do, don't we? Anyway, uh, they tell me that you've done a lot of uh, TV work also, which sure. I'm surprised because... I know of anybody, nobody in, in Germany here who speaks as good an English as you. And it's okay. <laughs> hard to find somebody who does. And I'm glad I hooked up with you. Yeah, so, I'm glad we met too. So th th tell me about what you did on Deep Space Nine. And, and what did you do any plays or anything like that? Uh, well, my background in Hollywood started when I went to school. I went to a performing arts school for four years. And uh, I was a music student, but I also learned something about theater and filmmaking. And um, actually, my first job on a TV show, actually it was a film, not a TV show, um, was um, Beastmaster 2. And uh, it was one of these things where I... remember I'd... Beastmasters. Yeah. Mark... Poodoo and Hoodoo, or Hoodoo and Poodoo? Poodoo yeah. and Hoodoo? Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah that's... The... Yeah, I've done, cr I've done little, commercials little with little varmints. Them. Yeah. Um, weasels. Weasels, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I think they were, uh, well, they might have been that, yeah. that type of a machine. That yeah. type of an animal. Yeah, it's um, yeah. a low budget, yes, not, yeah. not really a blockbuster film, but it, it was a fun uh, shoot to, to what, be what on. What was his name? Uh, I, I Mark, can't. Mark Singer. Mark Singer, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And uh, he's very nice. Oh, he's a hell of a nice guy. R really nice guy. And uh, the first night I worked on the show, it was a late night, and we were filming in a back alleyway in Los Angeles. And uh, the scene was, uh, there's this portal in time, and uh, Mark Singer comes out from his dimension, which is the time of legends. And mm. uh, he has uh, his uh, tiger friend with him. He also has an eagle, and he also has these two uh, weasels that are his thieves. Right, that's Hoodoo and Poodoo, or Poodoo right. and Hoodoo, or what, okay, yes, thing. yeah. Well, and uh, to focus on your, uh, your big thing in life, um, because we, we don't know Hoodoo and Poodoo too much. But, but, <laughs> but there's, there's a moment in this, uh, oh, the, yes, my yes. first, okay. which is, to me is, could have been a life-changing moment. <laughs> All right. uh, mm -hmm. There was a scene that we had to film with a tiger, a real life tiger. Mm. And uh, the shot is the police have cornered the beast master in this alleyway. And he's there with his tiger, he's got his eagle, and he's got hoodoo and podo, or whatever the, yes, the weasels yes. are. Yes. And uh, the shot is that um, they've got him cornered. And they had flames, they had some like torches or gas lines coming out of the walls or something and flames. And the tiger got agitated and started to drag the trainer around in this uh, little back corner. Yeah. They had a couple of uh, police cars there, and there's this one moment when the tiger got away, jumps up on the hood of this police car, and looks me right in the face, not more than three feet away. It's looking at me right in the face. I'm just standing there looking at him, and I'm like, oh my God, this, <laughs> this thing's gonna jump on me. Yeah. And that, that was my first experience in Hollywood. 
Oh, well, that's that. Well, hey, that was a heck of an experience, wasn't it? That was a heck of an experience. Yeah, Could have been life changing, but thank so, God it wasn't. What was your uh, your most exciting role in, uh, that you've had in the most? The most, the most interesting role. Well, the first one I told you was probably the most exciting. Yes. I had okay. The biggest charge out of that. That was uh, my, my. This is the beginning of my career, and this is the end of my career at the same time. Mark and the Tiger. Mark and the Tiger. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Okay. Uh, except it wasn't on camera. It wasn't being. Filmed. <laughs> but um, my most interesting job in Hollywood was probably the role I played on Star Trek. And it all started with uh, me being out of work. Of course, most actors are out of work most of the time. Definitely. And uh, I got a call for an interview and to go down to Paramount the next day and to be one of, I don't know, how many hundreds of different uh, people cattle who were there call, for they yeah, call cattle call. Cattle call, yeah. exactly. And I was there for most of the time. I was one of the last people being interviewed. Didn't get anything that I was there for, but they said, well, we have an interest to maybe put you in some makeup and have you play an alien character on the show. And I thought, okay, whatever you guys want to do, that's fine. I'm, <laughs> I'm interested in that. Was that a callback? Did they call you back on it? Yeah, or? I got a call back. Okay. All but right. I mean, as soon as I got accepted, they took me in for a fitting. And uh, it was a month later that they called me back to oh. actually look at the makeup, try it on, try the outfit on, uh -huh. and put it all together, and then uh, talk to Mike Westmore. He was the uh, makeup supervisor. Uh -huh. But Mike Westmore, he's a, a famous, his whole family goes back in the Hollywood, uh, history of Hollywood for, um, since the 30s or 40s. Um, his family is, is famous for makeup. So Mike Westmore saw it, and he said, uh -huh. wow, this looks good, okay. And I asked him before we were finished, when does this work? And he said, uh, the next Tuesday, which was the day after Memorial Day. Okay. And uh, so anyways, nobody called me to come in for my gig. And uh, when I talked to Mike Westmore, he said, they come in at four o'clock in the morning. And so I decided that I was gonna be there, whether they called me in or not. <laughs> and I didn't have a, I didn't have a car at the time, and the only way for me to get down to the studio was by bus, and I had to take a bus the night before, and so I stayed up all night in a <laughs> Denny's restaurant in Sherman Oaks, California, Oh boy! till about 3 o'clock in the morning, talking to an ex-Marine who was serving me coffee, and uh, at some point he said, I got a, a break in the next half hour, why don't I drive you down to the studio? So he drove me over there, and uh, I was too early. So uh, I was sitting out in front of uh, the wardrobe department and I fell asleep and then someone came over to me and they nudged me and they said, uh, can we help you? Why, why are you here? <laughs> and I said, um, yeah, I got here before everybody else. I, I must have fell asleep. And, and they said, uh, well, they're over on stage four. You should go over there. So I went over to stage four and uh, checked in with the ADs. And um, the second AD looked at her list and she looked at me and she said why are you here you're not on my list and I said I know there's a mistake just uh, double check and and she says well I, I don't have time for this why don't you go sit over there and I'm walking across the room and Mike Westmore was there the makeup supervisor oh, okay. and I said hi to him and he says Mark good you're here your makeup's over there and he points to a table and the makeup was all set up and ready to go and she looked at Mike and she, then she looked at me, and then she shook her head, and she says, I don't know, I just work here. Uh -huh. and she walked away. I'm sitting there, getting into makeup, and uh, a little while later, there's two ADs across the room, standing, looking at me, looking at each other, shaking their head, looking at me again. Oh, and the Jesus. one says to the other, isn't he your favorite alien? <laughs> and I thought, great, I'm, now I'm their favorite alien. And it's, it's over 100 degrees out, there's a heat wave, and the air conditioning on the sets that day were broken. Yeah. And it's, if it's 100 degrees outside, it's 110 degrees on the sets because of mm. all the lights and everything. And I'm in this monkey suit, the Morn suit, with this full makeup, like, like yours. It's like you were, you were playing out in the desert with that, weren't you? Well, yes, we did it out in Alba Dulce. Yeah. Vasquez Rocks? Vas Vasquez Rocks, right. Yeah. And uh, it's in the heat of the day. It's probably pretty warm outside. Yes, it was. Well, four inches of rubber all over your body. That, that was yeah. pretty warm, yeah. Yeah, so um, two days I worked on the show.
and lost maybe 10 pounds because it was so warm. Happens, doesn't it? Huh? Yeah. Happens. I like the I, I like the, the, the thing where they didn't know who you were because that was that was quite a... I've been to... I did a lot of shows where they say, come in at 5 for makeup. Right. And uh, because you're going to work at 6 or 7 or 8. Right. And you get there at 5, you get your makeup on, you don't work until 4.30 in the afternoon. That's, right. That's what's always great. Yeah, uh, that, that can yeah. be terrible. And by the time you work, your makeup is kind of miserable. and You, you right. had lunch at 1. Right. Yeah. I did that for two days in a row. Uh, I had to take a bus home. And then when I got home, I had just enough time to shower, shave, change my clothes, go back to the bus stop, and do the whole thing over again. <laughs> and no sleep. No time for sleep. Yeah. The only time I slept was on either on the set or on the bus on the way down. I would just fall asleep, you know. It, you get so tired, you just start nodding off. And um, the, the second day, the first assistant director came up to me and she, she said, oh, we really liked what you did yesterday. We think you have a career here. And I said, ah, you guys are just being nice to me. I'm in the monkey suit. It's 100 degrees outside. Yeah. It's 110 on the sets. You're just being nice. And then she came back to me at noontime. She says, oh, by the way, we have people here from Entertainment Weekly magazine. They want to put, put you, you on the cover interview, of the magazine. Huh? Well, great. <laughs> yeah, great. It, was, it was very funny. Uh, but the, the first day, she, the first time she brought me on the set, she says, okay, now it's time to put our favorite alien on the set, and we're going to put him right on camera. And she says, okay, you're at the bar, and you're telling this joke. And let's say it's the funniest joke in the universe. Can you handle that? And I looked at her out of my mind because I hadn't had any sleep. And I said, lady, whatever you want, you got it. And uh, the funny thing was, I thought of something in this moment, completely uh, no sleep, just sweating my ass off, sweating to death in this thing. Uh, I thought of what the funniest joke in the universe was. And it hit your funny, didn't it? Huh? Isn't that funny how, how... Yeah, it was just, you know... You don't know how these things happen. Well, yeah, that's that's using that's using the the things that we have that apparently a lot of people don't know how to use. Right. Okay. How did you feel when you the moment you notice, wow, now I'm in Hollywood and it's going it's going out. I can have a career here. How does it feel? Well, I mean, it's hard to gauge these things. You know, it's hard to say what that moment is. It's only in retrospect. But I mean, the, the, I think the moment that I found out that I was going to be on this magazine cover, I knew that there was something good that was happening there. And uh, there was a time when I was talking to my mom, and uh, she, she said, is this thing ever going to work out? Are you ever going to say something? <laughs> and I said, Mom, I've been on the cover of magazines. I have an action figure. <laughs> and that was the moment. Yeah. She said... Okay, well, then she started telling all of her friends that I was this alien on Star Trek. Yeah. And yeah. that they should all watch it. <laughs> mothers, mothers are funny uh, about, their, about their offspring, about their kids being, being in the picture business. My mother was the same thing. Oh, you're going to be here? Oh, can I get a picture of you and Clint? Can I get a picture of me and Clint? Right. I mean, every, everybody, uh, they want to they wanna get in there and, and, and see all this sure. stuff, and they start telling all their friends and... And sometimes you're over at your mom's house or something, and your mom will say, oh, this is my son. He's a movie star. And, yeah. oh, good God, what do you say? <laughs> oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> so for you, it wasn't that um, important to be a star. It was, it was a job, and you wanted to make the job as good as you can. For, for, yeah. for Well, you, for no. me, that's, yeah. that, that's, that's, that's what it was. I, yeah. was. I was there because it was a job. It was... Steady money. I liked what I was doing because that's that's the life I lived. Mm -hmm. uh, at times, uh, just like uh, what Mark said, uh, sometimes when you're working, you get into the into your own character, hmm. and then you can really push the good guy or the bad guy or or whatever you. And that's good. That's important. That yep. that is important. Mm -hmm.